this video, we're going to look at a couple of different words. We're going to look at how to, how to say several using G, and then how a couple of different ways to say every. But we'll start off with G here. G, remember, you know G as a question word, meaning how many. It's generally used to, um, to mean like how many when the speaker imagines a small number, usually from one to nine, or sometimes, you know, like in, if you're talking about the time, GDN, of course, it's one to 12. Um, or if you're using military time, it'd be one to 24 or zero to 24. But anyway, the G is used for smaller numbers generally when you're asking how many. Um, like, ni ji suela, how old are you when you say that to a child? You don't say it to an adult because it sounds diminutive and it sounds like you expect the person to be young. So G, meaning how many, um, it is a word that goes before a measure word. But here's the thing, in Chinese, question words can be used to make statements. And uh, I'm not going to get into all the details, but different question words might communicate different things using them in statements. And also the way the way that the way the statements put together might even change for the same question word a little bit. But when you say G in a statement, it usually means a, a few, a small number of, and that makes sense, right? Because you expect the, when it's a question that it's the answer is a small number. So when you're using it to say some of something, it means it's a, it's a few of something, a small number. Let me show you how this works. Now, grammar wise, it's exactly the same as a question. There's no, there's, remember Chinese doesn't change. The word order doesn't change if it's a question or a statement. So it, it, it's exactly like a question. Now here, if it's a question mark here, then this G would be, uh, this is this evening, today, today evening, this evening, Jigar and Yalai, how many people are going to come? That's what it would be. How many people are going to come this evening? That's what it would be if it's a question. But if it's a statement, it means that to this evening, several people are coming. Does that make sense? Now you're saying, how do I know the difference? Well, tone of voice, context will tell you a lot. Um, generally speaking, if it's a question, you're going to emphasize the pronunciation of G. You're going to drag it out a little bit more. It's going to be more stressed because it's the focal point of the, it's like how many people are coming? And if you're kind of like, oh yeah, a few people are coming, you might stress the jiga a little bit, like jin wan shang jiga and yao lai. So several people are coming tonight, um, where you might stress the pronunciation of jiga in a question more. But context will also tell you a lot. Here we have zhi yao ji kuai qian. Zhi yao ji kuai qian. So zhi yao means um, it only requires, so if you're talking about uh, buying an item and the, 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 the question in, on the table is how much does it cost? The answer could be geology Oh, it's kind of like, it just takes a few quai. It just takes, you know, it just costs, it just costs a few quai. It's not expensive. Geology quai chan. Now, this one will show you that the placement of the G in, in a larger number would kind of change the meaning. It still means several, but here it means several tens. So, na gewo give to me or um, get for me, actually would be um, a better way to say this, get for me um, or hand to me, that's maybe the best way, something like that, uh, bring to me, get for me, ji shi kuai, uh, ji shi zhang zhi. So zhi is paper. Zhang is a measure word for flat things, remember that? So ji shi, what do you think that means? Ji shi, it means several tens. So we don't actually have a way to say this in English. We don't say several tens. Like, go get me um, a number of tens of those pieces of those paper pieces of paper, right? We would just we might say, get me several dozens. That's the kind of the closest thing we have in English. But in Chinese, because this number is in the place of the tens, like so, you know, if it if it was two, it would be arsher. If it was four, it'd be sisher. If it was six, it'd be liusher. So I'm saying a, a, a non-specific number between one and nine of, of um, tens. So it'd be like saying, get me several dozens of pieces of paper. It's very nonspecific, but it's a like, little chunk. Um, so that's, that's a really interesting thing. So if I wanted to say, ji bai kuai, what do you think that means? Ji bai kuai. Bai is hundreds. So it means several hundreds of kuai. It's nonspecific. How many hundreds? A, a, a few hundreds, right? Um, also, I wanted to point out that ji can be used um, in the same way as do was from the last video. So here we have 
三十几个，三十几个。Now it's it's kind of in line with exactly the same idea here.、Um, it's not like a different usage, but when you apply it to this, like 三十几个 now it's it's just like saying 三十多个 right? The difference is,、um, I think that 三十几三十几 usually. G is going to be followed by a measure word.、Um, the I, I guess you wouldn't say like if I were to say um, uh, G, uh, 两百两百几块 I can say that 两百几块 I think 两百几块 I'm not exactly sure,、um, but I know it can be I can it can be here. So I'm I'm trying to think of like what sounds right in terms of when to use G. Do is maybe a little bit broader can be used in. In in other in other ways, where G is kind of like it means several and it's a replacement specifically for a number. So do cannot be used here. Only G can because it comes before the sure do comes after things, and G can also come after things. But I think it tends to have a measure word.、Um, how many people are coming? Sounds like G. Yeah, you can also do that too. Anyway, there you go. Apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about, but、uh, enjoy. Jay, help me edit that that out.、Uh, I am just totally tired. I guess.、Um, I hope that's helpful for you to know how to say several. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to say every. This is kind of like the standard way to say every.、Um, the The word is may, and it means every or each. And it 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 carries a measure word. It, it's kind of like how many every every of that. Uh, uh, so it, it's it's may plus measure word plus noun and、uh, plus do. Sometimes the noun is omitted because it's understood. So it's may measure word may and measure word maybe a noun and then do.、Uh, you'll see in the sentence in these sentences that may. And do meaning all are paired together almost all the time. It's kind of like they go together like peanut butter and jelly. May do may do may do.、Um, in English, that would sound very awkward. Let me let me give you, let me show you why. 每个人都需要爱。每个人 What do you think that means? Each person or every person, all people. 每个人每个人都 all. 需要爱 need love. So every person needs love. Make a run. But but what I'm saying with the do is every person all needs love. In English, you wouldn't say that. You might say, excuse me, all people need love. You can say every person needs love,、um, but you don't say all people.、Uh, every person all needs love. But in Chinese, you do. And in fact, I think we may have talked before about do. Examples where do kind of has like a large number, and they they kind of work together to emphasize either all people or、um, a, a a large like Honduran do. Honduran means a lot of people. Honduran Chinese do 喜欢吃米饭 So many people, many Chinese people do all, not all. Many many Chinese people. It just kind of emphasizes the large number of it. Okay. So, 每个人都需要爱。我小孩每天都上课。上课 means goes to class. 我小孩 means my child. 每天 What does that mean? Every day. And again, 天 is a measure word here. So there's an understood noun of time, but we're not going to say it. 每天 just means every day. 我小孩每天都上课。My child goes to school every day. Taman Mayan do. This is very similar. Mayan every year. Again, Mayan is a measure word, and the the noun is 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 not there. It's understood to be time probably. Taman Mayan do qu san tang Shanghai. San tang means three trips or three times. So they go Shanghai is of course Shanghai is the city. So they go to Shanghai for three trips every year. Or they go every year. They go to Shanghai three times, something like that. So there we have May. It's a very useful phrase.、Um, it, there's a measure word attached to it, and it's often,、uh, almost always, paired with do 
to emphasize that, that largeness of quantity. Now we're going to talk about reduplication of measure words. Reduplication means to double. Um, and what when you double a measure word, what that it's another way to say every. So just like we talked about every, the, the most common way is may plus measure word. But if we take a measure word and we double it, uh, there are some measure words where that will then mean every of that thing. And so the noun will actually not be spoken. It'll just be measure word, measure word, and then do, and then whatever you want to say about it. So for example, ge ge do zou la. So ge ge. Now, ge ge can refer to many, many things, right? Um, but when you say ge ge, you're usually talking about people, especially when you're talking about leaving or walking away because, you know, apples don't usually do that. Um, I guess you could talk about them having left if someone takes them or whatever. But anyway, ge ge is uh, talking about people. So all that means all the people, every person, just like mega you can you can say ge ge, ge ge do zou la. So reduplicating the ge means all people because ge would be referring to people. Here we have um, tian tian. Now tian means day, but remember it's not a noun; it's a measure word. So it's, we can we can reduplicate it. We can double it. Ta tian tian qu na jia ka fei dian zuo zuo. Now here. Um, uh, chu means go. Na jia cafe dian. Cafe dian is coffee shop. Na jia means that. That um, this is a measure word for company or or um, shop. Na jia cafe dian. Zuo zuo. Now zuo zuo is re oh, I didn't put the pinyin there. It's z u o z u o fourth tone. Zuo zuo um, means to to sit. And re remember, re reduplicating a, a verb makes the the feeling of that verb kind of light and casual and so what this what this is to translate this whole sentence is every day that's the tian tian every day ta tian tian every day she goes to that coffee shop to sit sit to you know to have to sit down and and hang out jar de shu ban ban do hao kan so this is like a topic sentence so we start with the topic. What are we talking about? The books here. So shu is books. Jarda means here. Here da shu. So the books that are here. Um, ban ban. Ban is the measure word for books. So um, yi ban shu. And because I know we're talking about books, especially when I say ban ban, it's clear that I'm saying all the books. So jarda shu. Jarda shu. The books here. All of them. Do hao kan are all are all you know. Um, <laughs> I have a trouble with translating hao kan sometimes, especially when re referring to movies and um, and books and stuff. I guess we just say good in English most of the time. All these books are really good, um, not good to see or good to read. Um, all the good to read could fit in some sentences. Jar de shu ban ban do hao kan. Um, so that's that. I wanted to point out that. Reduplicating measure words is not going to work in every situation, especially when it's not clear what we're talking about. But there are certain uh, phrases that it works well with, and you can learn them. Um, but especially ge ge and tian tian, they are the most common. Uh, ge ge meaning every person, and tian tian meaning every day. Uh, but, you know, you, bun bun, which can show up and in, in different situations. Um, you could, especially when the context is clear what we're talking about, reduplicating measure words will work for some of them. I hope you're having a great time learning. Keep up the good work. You're amazing. You're learning Chinese.